Dear class of 2024, let me begin by wishing you all once again a very warm welcome. This is an unusual start to the academic year. I should be meeting and greeting all of you personally, but we are living in strange times. The pandemic has caused fundamental disruptions to the way we live and work. All over the world, people have had to make major adjustments to deal with the uncertainties and unpredictability caused by the crisis. It is perhaps not an exaggeration to say that we are moving in and toward uncharted territory. In such times, many of you may feel anxious, powerless and lacking in control. Embarking on your college journey, a period of transition and change in the best of times is now made all the more challenging because of what is happening now. And for the international students, moving to Singapore may be an exciting but at the same time disorienting experience. When all that is external is changing and volatile, we must look within ourselves and find stability in something that is intrinsic. Here I'm referring to our values and principles. Values represent our convictions about what is important. They shape our attitudes and guide our behaviour. As a college, we must embrace a set of core values that should guide how we behave and function as a community. Months of deliberation and reflection with all members of the community, including our students, took place to decide what core tenets lie at the heart of our institution. These have been distilled into core values which I will now share with you. I hope these values will be the hallmark of your Yale Anywhere experience from the start. First is transformation. A Yale Anywhere education is not just an intellectual journey. Our unique living and learning experience aims to shape you into a person that is well-rounded and holistic while continuing to push the boundaries of knowledge and scholarship to make a positive impact on the world. In your time here, you will develop the capacity to live and study in a diverse environment. Learn how to have difficult conversations with people who may hold very different beliefs, to balance work and play, all of which we hope will mean that you will leave the college a better and different person than when you entered. But transformation cannot happen without exploration. We are firmly committed to open inquiry and academic freedom. You are actively encouraged to take courses and join activities outside of your comfort zone and discuss issues of the day, debate them rigorously, but with much respect and empathy. The common curriculum is perfect for this. I encourage you to keep an open mind as you study subjects which you may not have had interest in or knowledge about previously, for only by venturing into the unfamiliar do we open ourselves to the possibility of change. Attend as many rector's teas as you can and take part in the numerous talks and discussions happening at the college throughout the semester. At Yale NUS, we have students from over 70 countries and a plethora of cultural, social and educational backgrounds. Respect is thus a cornerstone for without which such a diverse community as ours could not hold together. Why not challenge yourself to have a conversation with someone whose life experience is different from yours or who might hold very different views? While respect is foundational, we strive to go beyond mere tolerance to understand, appreciate and celebrate our differences with the value of inclusivity. We are all part of this community and Yale and US should be a safe space for everyone. It can only work if we all try to make this happen. As you settle into your new suite, ask yourself, how can you make Yale and US home, not just for yourself, but for all around you? Finally, care for one another and yourself is a key. A proactive concern for each other as individuals and for the community as a whole, especially important in a time like this. Do also make sure you take time out for yourself when the going gets too busy or hectic. Think not just about what you can get out of your experience at Yale and US, but what you can do 
to enrich it for others. You will face difficulties. Some of you, and not just international students, may feel homesick. For the first time, you may fall ill and not have your loved ones here to take care of you. You will face unfamiliar, sometimes scary experiences. Take care of one another. Be kind to one another. Support one another through all this. That is what being a community means. As you get swept up in all that is new, classes, extracurricular activities, exploring a new country and culture, remember also to take time out for yourself amidst the whirlwind of activities. Spend some time to ground and center yourself and figure your own internal value compass, which will guide you in the weeks, months, and years ahead. All of these values, transformation, exploration, respect, inclusivity, and care, shape the college's decision and policies. The value framework helps provide us with our grounding and identity as a community. I hope that you will take all these values to heart. Putting them into practice will shape you into the citizens of the world that we hope you will become, making positive changes, big and small, both within and beyond Yale and West College. Class of 2024, welcome again, and my best wishes for the exciting journey you're about to embark on. I look forward to seeing all of you in campus soon. Dear class of 2024, I take it that you are all here by a mix of choice and circumstance rather than accident or error, and that you are, on the strength of that fact, excited by, or at the very least open to, the idea of a liberal education. The purpose of a liberal education, generally speaking, lies in the advancement of its participants' knowledge and understanding of the human condition and the world within which they live, and will inevitably look to alter, in all its vagueness and variety. It should, as Maxine Green once said of art, enable us to see more in our experience, to hear more on normally unheard frequencies, to become conscious of what daily routines have obscured, what habit and convention have suppressed. It is for this reason multidisciplinary in its essence. And in the coming days, you will encounter, or perhaps be made to encounter, with varying degrees of enthusiasm, the strange and beautiful ideas animating the arts and the humanities, the sciences and the social sciences, ideas which collectively reveal the finest intellectual achievements of the human spirit, past and present. But beyond working to stretch your mind across this vast constellation of ideas, a liberal education is further committed to the development of thinkers, minds intensely independent, critical, creative, charitable, generous. It does so in part by committing itself to an interdisciplinary approach, which calls upon its practitioners to stand between disciplines, to move across them, to bring together the methods, rules, techniques, and knowledge of one discipline with those of another, so that they may look upon a curious scene from diverse perspectives, raise questions that have never been raised, or give answers that have never been given. This does not, it should be said, entail the death of the discipline. For an interdisciplinary approach is only as strong as the disciplines which compose it, and there are merits to specialization, which is itself of great importance to the advancement of knowledge. The point, rather, is that crossing the narrow streets of each discipline could expand the range of thinkable ideas in as yet unthinkable ways. So, dwell in possibility, as Emily Dickinson once said. Be passionately curious about everything, whatever your calling. Learn about Einstein's accounts of general and special relativity, about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, or of the possibility that at the bottom of all matter lies filaments or strings vibrating in different patterns. Take pity on Schrodinger's cat, which must endure the terrible condition of being both alive and dead just before measurement settles its fate. Learn about the structure of Shakespeare's sonnets, mostly of three quatrains in a couplet, and their rhythm, the iambic pentameter. 
be struck by Jane Austen's magistral use of free and direct speech and irony to bring power and convention under scrutiny and critique. Learn about Darwin and evolution, and from it, how there may yet be artistry without an artist. And learn of the grand importance of equality, that the words, deeds, ambitions, and dreams of all should receive an equal hearing. Be deemed as having equal significance, regardless of the color of one's skin or the direction of one's sexuality. Put, where appropriate, the ideas you will gain from the different disciplines together so that we may grow in our understanding of the complex world within which we live and conjure up new solutions to old problems. Now, you might say that all of this sounds rather too difficult. It will be difficult, but nothing worth doing is ever easily gained. You may say that taking classes outside your expertise is risky. It will come at great cost to your grades, to your hallowed GPA. I will not pretend that grades do not matter at all. Far too often, and regrettably, the world will ask that you announce your accomplishments before it will assign you your worth. But your grades will recede in significance with the passage of time. And what you will be left with are your experiences, or the memories of your experiences, and they might, perhaps, be of greater value when you look back upon the events of your life. And finally, you might say that there is no practical utility in knowing about philosophy or literature or some of the other arts or even the more theoretical sciences. But we do not always know what is useful until it becomes useful or is made to be useful, and that is entirely in your hands. In any case, the complexion of your life the meaning of existence is not to be curled up in a single dimension of utility narrowly defined. To borrow the words of Whitman, you are large, you contain multitudes. Let your time here be one of discovery and creation. Thank you. Hello, first years. Some of you already have seen me and added me on Facebook, but I'm Hazim, currently a junior majoring in PPE. I'd like to first congratulate all of you for joining Yale NUS and matriculating here. It is a step in the unknown, whether you come halfway around the world or even the island, amidst the uncertain COVID-19 situation, to embark on a new journey in your life. Many of you will be exploring an unfamiliar environment in an already unfamiliar situation, with many questions on what exactly can we expect. Question on what's the common curriculum like? How is the student life going to be? What kind of activities will I be joining? The most amazing thing about Yale NUS is the vast number of opportunities that you can dabble in. From pursuing your research interests, joining a new performance art or sport, and exploring the experiential learning opportunities at SIPE. You will never run out of things to do. Events, as well, are commonplace here at Yale and US. And you'll start to notice the constant refresh of posters in the lifts. But more than activities, you'll be meeting, and most likely already have met, people from all over the world. Different cultures intermingling with the same burning passion for growth and change. But with the vast number of opportunities, it can get overwhelming. Doubt can and will settle in. Being surrounded with so many amazing people, it is easy to ask, one, do I feel good? Will I ever be good? Will I ever be good enough? Coming out of high school, military service, or even your gap year, Academics will need settling in. Concerns over the writing rigor or familiarity with the English language is only natural. The fear of missing out will always be there. Should I join as many student organizations as possible? How about adding on an internship with all my other commitments as well? How do I continue to keep pushing myself? How can I make sure my time here at Yale NUS is worth it? In a sea of events and people, it will be easy to feel lost, confused, and sometimes even lonely. But even with your chapter remaining uncertain, 
there's one constant at Yale and US, and that is community. I remember very clearly in March, staring at the sudden announcement on my computer that students had to move out because of COVID-19. Before I became the president of the student government, I had to oversee summer storage, an initiative for students to store items over summer. And at that moment, I was just thinking of the enormity of the task of facilitating the process of moving hundreds of items and accommodating hundreds of students. My mind completely froze. But because I knew I had about 12 hours to have a concrete plan, I had to start typing. And when I started sending out the announcements, messages poured in from everywhere, encouraging me to press on. And if I ever needed help, people were there to lend a helping hand. In the lifts, the people I bumped to, they had a spontaneous, all the best, or tiayo. My sweet mate stuck with me through thick and thin, volunteering to help move the bulky items from the storage area to the holding location. Despite not being affiliated with StuGov at all, I had a fully supportive team as well who ensured that we met all the objectives. And moments like these are bound to happen. It could be your final assignment deadline, late night dance rehearsals or competition trainings, when you feel like you've hit rock bottom. But around you, you have your sweet mates and teammates, friends who will take care of you, buy bubble tea from across your town, or make Indomie late at night amidst the midnight conversations. One thing is for sure, you will definitely have an almond supper, and I strongly recommend cheese fries with butter chicken. There will be chill sessions at the battery where you're all cuddled up, or singing your hearts out at So Far So Good. More than sweet mates, you have the care and support of your OGLs and RCAs who will constantly be on the lookout for you. Till today, my OGL joins my suite for game nights and my RCA pops by when he's back on break. And there's so many others as well, from seniors, faculty, staff, and even alumni. During the move out, the alumni gathered to create an emergency fund to help those in need. Similarly, if you want to start something, it's as simple as grabbing a friend and just starting it. As you embark on this journey, know this for sure, you'll never walk alone. You will find your voice, your story, and your narrative right here at Yale and US. Thank you. Good evening, members of the class of 2024. Welcome to Yale NUS and to Elm College. This is my first year as rector of Elm College and I am excited to be starting on this new journey with you. But unlike you, Elm College, Yale NUS and NUS at large are not new to me. I was a student at NUS almost two decades ago. About 10 years ago, I joined NUS Law as a faculty member. A year and a half ago, I started to split my time between NUS Law and Yale NUS. Now I am your rector as well as head of studies of the Law Liberal Arts double degree program. I know this is an extraordinary time to be starting a new phase of your life. Having endured all kinds of travel restrictions and movement controls just to get here, some of you more than others. Others among you may have family and friends who are struggling health-wise, financially or in other ways. I want to let you know that you are welcome to reach out and talk to me or my team at Elm College. For instance, Assistant Dean Dr. Su In Chu, Resident Life Officers Leonard Chan and Chia Ping Wen, or other colleagues whom you feel much more comfortable with. And even if this wasn't an extraordinary time of pandemic and contagion, the time that you and all of us are about to make here at Elm College will also be a life-changing one. And I urge you to begin this journey with an open mind and heart. I have seen many students who are very sure when, that they know what they want to do when they come to college. They draw up a plan, and once they enter college, 
they threw themselves into this plan. They are driven and they will have a good chance at success. You will probably find some of these classmates. It is one way to live the next few years of your life. However, if you are one of those who are wondering what's the next module to take next semester, don't worry, there is nothing wrong. You should be relieved because you have the time and the freedom to figure it out. Take advantage of the array of classes from the social sciences to the sciences and the arts and humanities and the multitude of clubs, sports and other activities. And for those of you who think that you have a plan, don't worry if they get scuttled along the way or things just didn't go as you had carefully designed. Just ask your seniors whose internship plans got waylaid due to the COVID-19 pandemic these past few months. You have time, the rest of your life to learn and to grow. Students often tell me, oh, I have to do this and that by the time I am 24 or 25. And I would ask why. Oftentimes, they cannot articulate the reason. It is just that something has to be done by a certain time or an age. Some answer, perhaps it's because they fear they would fall behind. Then the question is, fall behind whom? Other people, their peers? For sure, every society has a time, a schedule of when it is appropriate or when it is expected for someone to achieve this or that milestone, such as finish your education, get married, buy a house, etc. But guess what? You don't have to follow that schedule. Yes, it will be harder for those of us who don't follow it because there is no timetable for you to tell you when and how to do it and no certainty what you do or when you do something that you will find approval or be judged a success, it is going to be harder. After high school, I studied journalism because I had no idea what else I wanted to do. My parents thought they knew. Be a doctor, be a lawyer, you know the drill. Running around, reporting and writing just felt like something that I wanted to do and to do well there and then. And so I did it. Two years into my first job as a newspaper reporter, I wanted to study law because I had wanted to try something else. So I went to law school at NUS, much to my dad's relief. I love thinking about the law and doing research. But I knew I also had absolutely no interest in becoming a lawyer, much to my dad's dismay. So I worked in a different job for two years and then thought I wanted to go on my PhD studies. After all, I enjoyed research and writing. Again, at the time, I had no idea how I would end up with my career until one day I coincidentally bumped into my dean at the time who encouraged me to apply to NUS for a job. And so that's how I ended up here, finding what I love to do, academia, research, teaching, and being here in the college. If you had asked me, when I was 18 years old from a Chinese independent school in East Malaysia, I would not have imagined that I would spend my adult years in the US and Singapore back and forth, and now here with you. Living on your own time, not somebody else's time, is not easy. You will feel lonely and you will feel afraid, but you will live more authentically and you will be happier. And it is with these words that I hope you will think about as you settle into Elm College, Yale NUS, and your new life here as a liberal arts student. In the coming weeks and months, you will hear from me and my team about events and activities at Elm College, and we look forward to seeing you and getting to know you. Thank you and have a wonderful evening.